Thousand have misfired and landed back inside the Gaza Strip, causing untold damage to people there. In the past day, the Air Force has struck a launch post from which rockets were fired at Israeli communities just yesterday. Over 1,200 victims of the 10-7 massacre have been identified to date. Total number of people injured since 10-7 requiring evacuation to hospital is 11,485. IDF fatalities since the start of the October 7th massacre stand at 466. That's up by three since yesterday's update. The whole nation mourns the deaths of Master Sergeant First Class Reserves Maoz Fenigstein, Captain Reserves Lior Sivan and Captain Reserves Uriel Cohen, who all fell in battle yesterday. May their memories be a blessing. An update on the October 7th hostage crisis. Hamas is still holding 129 people hostage since 10-7. That's in addition to four hostages from before the massacre. Among those 129 hostages are 19 females and 110 males, 118 Israelis and 11 foreign citizens, two minors, the Bibas infants, and 10 people aged 75 and over, including the men in the Sikh, Hamas and Islamic Jihad propaganda videos. Included in those 129 hostages are at least 21 who have been murdered, with Hamas holding their bodies hostage. Israel demands that the Red Cross pressure Hamas to secure access to the hostages in its terror dungeons. It's just not good enough to say that that won't work, as President Miriana Spoliarich told Prime Minister Netanyahu last week. The Red Cross must at least try, and foreign governments must hold it accountable for its gross negligence and this flagrant abandonment of our hostages. We all saw that tweet from the Red Cross yesterday listing 11 groups that are protected under the rules of war, and we are horrified by the glaring omission of hostages from that list, which it's difficult to believe was entirely by accident. We demand that the Red Cross start drawing attention to the plight of those vulnerable hostages in the Hamas terror dungeons and pursue every avenue to visit and treat them before their release. We remain committed to that pledge. No one left behind. Some operational updates. Israeli forces continued their targeted operations against Hamas terrorists and infrastructure as we dismantled the Hamas terror state. Since 10-7, we have uncovered approximately 1,500 Hamas terror tunnel shafts and tunnel routes in the Gaza Strip, most of them under schools, hospitals, mosques, and yes, even UN facilities. We are continuing our targeted raids to uncover Hamas weapons caches, exposing weapons production sites and a large storage facility in Al-Atatra and Jabalia. We are acting to thwart Hamas's despicable human shield strategy and its deliberate attempts to endanger civilians and evade justice after its crimes against humanity. Over the past day, the IDF has struck over 300 terror targets in Gaza. Troops have located a truck with long-range rockets in Jabalia, uncovered underground terror infrastructure in the homes of Hamas terrorists in Khan Yunis, and seized weapons at military command centers in that town too. Israel also continues to expose how Hamas has militarized hospitals, jeopardizing their protected humanitarian status under international law. Yesterday, we revealed how the director of the Kamal Adwan Hospital in Jabalia confessed that Hamas had converted hospitals into military facilities and that he was in fact a high-ranking Hamas officer. This is the same Kamal Adwan Hospital from which dozens of Hamas terrorists surrendered last week with their weapons above their heads. Ahmed Kahalot told investigators that he was recruited to Hamas in 2010 at the rank of Brigadier General and the hospital retained Hamas military operatives as medical staff. Hospitals must be protected. They must be protected from Hamas. Unfortunately, too many international officials have been tacitly complicit with Hamas's crimes. Instead of demanding accountability, they cover up for Hamas and they try to shift blame onto Israel to cover up that fact. We refer, for example, to recent calls by UN officials calling for an investigation into the Israeli raid on that hospital when they should be investigating how Hamas turned it into a military base right under their noses. We demand that the World Health Organization, Red Cross and all other aid agencies active in Gaza condemn Hamas for waging war out of hospitals and jeopardizing their protected status. And we expect foreign governments to hold them accountable for failing to do so. 
We are deeply moved by Ayelet Levi Shahar, who is speaking out on behalf of her 19-year-old abducted daughter, Nahama. International condemnations, she says, have been too little and too late. We now know where the UN Women Organization was for the 55 days before it condemned Hamas's use of rape as a weapon of war. Their deputy chief of peace and security was busy endorsing over 150 anti-Israel tweets. And I hope you've seen that shocking report by UN Watch. That was more than negligence. This is the abandonment of Israeli women. And time is running out for them in the Hamas terror dungeons. An update on humanitarian aid. Israel still has excess capacity to increase aid deliveries to Gaza by 300 percent. Yesterday, Israel inspected 127 humanitarian aid trucks, which then entered Gaza through Rafah and Kerem Shalom, and we can screen up to 500 at the moment. If the aid entering Gaza is inadequate, interested parties should ask international donors why they are not sending more. Hamas, why it is hijacking aid, and international agencies, why they do not condemn Hamas's theft of aid. Sadly, parties who want to secure impunity for Hamas and cover up their own complicity with it are trying to deflect blame onto Israel. We categorically reject the despicable and libelous allegations that Israel is somehow obstructing the delivery of humanitarian aid into Gaza when we stand ready to facilitate 300% more. An update from the Northern Front. The IDF continues to respond forcefully to Hezbollah aggression on the northern border, striking launchers used to fire at Israel and the terrorists responsible. The situation in the north is intolerable, with 80,000 Israelis displaced from communities along the border and unable to return home. Hezbollah's systematic violations of UN Security Council Resolution 1701 have rendered it effectively null and void, after two and a half months of ignoring our warnings to desist and cease its aggression, Hezbollah is now dragging Lebanon into an unnecessary war that would have devastating consequences for the Lebanese people. The time is now for the international community to act for the full implementation of UN Security Council Resolution 1701 because we are determined to restore security based on that resolution pushing back Hezbollah. Unless and until a diplomatic solution is found and implemented, we will continue making the necessary preparations to remove that threat from our border. Finally, a diplomatic update. As the UN Security Council prepares for another vote, we are glad that Secretary General Antonio Guterres watched the Hamas atrocity video 74 days after the massacre. After that private screening, he said that what he saw was human beings at their worst, and we propose working that language into a UN Security Council resolution. And here is our text. Having resolved that the Hamas atrocities of the October 7th massacre showed human beings at their worst, the United Nations demands the worst people's unconditional surrender and the immediate release of the hostages. That is the only step the United Nations can take to advance international peace and security as Israel proceeds to dismantle the Hamas terror state in response to 10-7 and to bring the perpetrators of those barbaric atrocities to justice. That's all for today's update. We'll now take your questions through the Zoom. Thank you. The first question is from Lior Soroka of The Washington Post. Can you comment on the newly published information regarding the death of the three hostages by the IDF? Was there a video in which they are being heard asking for help in Hebrew? Did the army kill the Hamas militants who held the hostages before the incident occurred? That tragic incident is, of course, being investigated fully by the IDF, and everyone in Israel is asking how on earth a tragic accident like that could happen. We know that our forces are operating in impossibly difficult circumstances in which Hamas is operating in civilian dress, out of civilian areas, trying to lure our soldiers into ambushes, including by trying to lure them into to thinking that they are uh, going to save hostages. And that is being investigated. As for specific information coming out of the IDF investigations, uh, the IDF will, of course, continue to update and will continue to be transparent about the results of that investigation. But that information, as and when it comes out, will come from the IDF. The next question is from Hannah Julian of the Jewish Press. Foreign Minister Eli Cohen today said Israel is coordinating a maritime corridor from Cyprus to Gaza to facilitate future transfer of goods. Will the Kerem Shalom and Erez crossings be permanently closed? And when is this likely to take place, if so? 
The uh, last week, Israel announced that the Karam Shalom crossing would be opened temporarily as part of our understandings with the Americans, our American allies, to increase the flow of aid into Gaza. That's despite the fact that there is still excess capacity at the Nitsana crossing that is not being used, but we facilitated uh, the use of the Karam Shalom crossing temporarily. Uh, as part of those understandings, the United States has also undertaken to fund an upgrade of the Rafah crossing to ensure that in future all aid will be able to enter through Rafah and will not need to enter through Israeli crossings. The fact that aid is entering from Israeli territory, I'll remind you, means that Israel is going above and beyond its obligations under international law to allow humanitarian aid to reach the people of Gaza. There is no obligation under international law to allow one's own territory to be used to deliver supplies to enemy-held territory across a hostile frontier. Uh, definitely no international precedent of that. We're going above and beyond our obligations as part of our diplomatic undertakings and concern for civilians in Gaza. But the plan is that the Karam Shalom crossing will be open only temporarily. This is not a permanent solution as far as we are concerned. Is from Emily Rose of Reuters. Could we get an update on a potential hostage deal? Also, what is the expected hike in import prices from the disruption of incoming shipping to Israel? Emily, your first question on the hostages. I'm afraid I can't comment on sensitive negotiations that may be ongoing to secure the release of the hostages. These are sensitive issues with human lives in the balance, and the less we say, the better. Uh, we'll just remind you that uh, Israel had hoped that the previous hostage release pause would continue. And just as Hamas started this war on October 7th, it restarted this war on December 1st when it decided to terminate the hostage release pause, not release 10 hostages on the last day, not release all the women and children as it was obligated to do so, and to resume uh, rocket fire towards Israeli cities. We already had enough violent Palestinian criminals in our jails lined up to secure the extension of that hostage release pause by a few more days. And we think it's regrettable that Hamas decided to terminate that framework and resume hostilities against us. As we've said from the very beginning, we have two main goals in this war, to bring back all the hostages, no one left behind, and to destroy the Hamas terror state in response to 10-7. And we will, of course, welcome any opportunity to get hostages out of Gaza. That is a top priority uh, for us. But beyond that, I, I can't comment on sensitive negotiations other than to say we're committed to that pledge. There will be no one left behind. Uh, and everyone in here, you know, I'm wearing this dog tag around my neck um, to remind us that none of us are free until all of them are free. As for your question about the, uh, the, the Houthi terror pirate threat, uh, I have no uh, immediate data about uh, what the economic repercussions of that terror piracy would be. We, of course, welcome the international coalition of 10 navies to repel the Houthi terror pirate threat. This is a threat not just to Israel, but to global maritime trade, to the peace and security of international maritime routes. It is a global threat, and it is right that that be dealt with on a global level. And we thank our American allies for that forceful decision to secure freedom of navigation on the high seas. Is from Brian Peitch of the Washington Post. Will Israel get involved in dealing with the Houthi attacks on Israeli-associated ships in the Red Sea, as the Israeli ambassador to Russia said it may? And is Israel prepared to mitigate any economic impacts from the shipping delays, and does it have a response to Malaysia banning any is Israeli-associated ships docking at its ports? Uh as for your question about the Houthi terror uh, pirate threat, as we said, this is a global threat. It is correct that this be dealt with on a global level. We salute our American allies for leading uh, that response. As for specific Houthi attacks on us, and we've seen missile fire as well, that is a threat that will be addressed. Beyond that, I cannot elaborate other than to say that threat will be addressed and we stand shoulder to shoulder with our American allies and foreign allies treating that as a uh, global threat. As for your specific question about Malaysia, I don't have any immediate information at hand. Uh, not surprising given that Malaysia has no diplomatic relations with Israel and has been known for a while as a very fervent hotspot uh, of anti-Semitism, uh, very virulent anti-Semitism, in fact. And we think that all nations concerned for international peace and security and the peace of global maritime trade should stand up to the Houthi terror pirate threat and should not be collaborating or lending a hand with attempts to obstruct freedom of navigation on the high seas. Okay, that's all the questions we have today. We will update you about uh, the timing of the next briefing. Everyone keep safe. Thank you very much.
the job net. 